Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Um, but in our dealings with the Holy Spirit, we've, we've many times failed to recognize who or what the Spirit is. Is the Holy Spirit in it? An influence, force, an energy that proceeds from God? Or a divine person who is God himself. Whereas we study this, we're going to attempt uh, to prove from the word that the Holy Spirit is a person, actually God to be exact, and therefore worthy of adoration, praise, worship, and fellowship. I want to read to you a little bit out of R.A. Torrey's book. This book, that's amazing. You read some of the stuff these guys did in 1910. See, we always say we got a corner on everything because we all, you know, oh, we got a new revelation. Now, this stuff, you know, Tory wrote this in his book in 1910. The person and work of the Holy Spirit, Ari Tory. Ari Tory was in the, was in the um, beginning of the Assemblies of God. And um, he wrote this chapter on the personality of the Holy Spirit. But let's just read some things he says here in this very opening paragraphs, two or three paragraphs that are just good. <clears throat> before one can un correctly understand the work of the Holy Spirit. See, we're always looking for the power of the Spirit, the manifestation of the Spirit, you know, the, the, the outpouring of the Spirit. But he says here, before you can un un fully understand or correctly understand his work, you must first of all know the Spirit himself. A frequent source of error and fanaticism about the work of the Holy Spirit is the attempt to study and understand his work without first of all coming to know him as a person. It is of the highest importance from the standpoint of worship that we decide whether the Holy Spirit is a divine person worthy to receive our adoration, our faith, our love, and our entire surrender to himself, or whether it is simply an influence emanating from God or a power and an illumination that God imparts to us. If the Holy Spirit is a person, and a divine person, and we do not know him as such, then we are robbing a divine being of the worship and the faith and the love and the surrender to himself, which are his due. Amen. Now, you know, we think about it now. We, we Pentecostal charismatics word of faith people. You know, we kind of, we kind of almost in some times take the Holy Spirit as our, as our power gig, we know about the love of Jesus. We know about loving the Father. We worship Jesus. We worship the Father. Amen? We talk of God the Father and God the Son in terms of adoration and, and, and love. And how often do we refer to the Holy Spirit that way? Now, if he is, as, it's, as we will clearly show, the third person of the Godhead, he is co-equal with God the Father and God the Son. Then he's worthy of the same adoration, respect, and honor and praise that the Father and the Son are. Amen? Let's see here. I flipped all the... Here we go. It is also of the highest importance from the practical standpoint that we decide whether the Holy Spirit is merely some mysterious and wonderful power that we... <clears throat> in our weakness and ignorance are somehow to get a hold of and use, or whether the Holy Spirit is a real person, infinitely holy, infinitely wise, infinitely mighty, and infinitely tender, who is to get a hold of and use us. How often do we think we're trying to get more of the power so we can use it instead of we get, giving ourselves over to the Holy Spirit so he can use us? These are concepts that seem, maybe seem minor, but in actuality are key to having a true flow in the Spirit and with the Spirit. Because when we realize our role is not to get Him so we can go do, it is to give us to Him so He can send us to do and equip us. Remember, Jesus said, go ye into Jerusalem and tarry ye there. 
until you be endued with power from on high. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be people who go around and brag about how much Holy Ghost you got. You'll be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. Amen. Am I, am I on? Yeah, okay. I'm on. Hallelujah. The former concept, that is, that we're to get a hold of him, and we got power, is, uh, this is really, really strong, is utterly heathenish. Not essentially different from the thought of the African fetish worshiper who has his God whom he uses. A strong the latter concept, that is, we give ourselves over to him for him to use us, is sublime and Christian. If we think of the Holy Spirit, as so many do, as merely a power or influence, our constant thought will be, how can I get more of the Holy Spirit? But if we think of him in the biblical way, as a divine person, our thought will be, how can the Holy Spirit have more of me? Remember we see that song, I Surrender All. <clears throat> too often we're wanting the Holy Spirit to surrender to us instead of us surrendering to him. We're looking for the power to make us successful instead of giving ourselves to the Spirit to use us as his. Remember, we, we said this numerous times over the past few years. We cannot determine success by a worldly standard. We got a lot of people using the world's techniques, the world's methods, the world's ideology to become uh, or, and to get successful. And in the world's eyes, they are. They got big crowds. They like they have hand tailored suits. They got hand tailored shoes. They wear the power tie of the month. All these different things. And as far as the world is concerned, they are successful because they got money in the bank. But how how surrendered are you to the Spirit of God and His will? Because I say. Every time that you're not surrendered, you lose, you have, you lack success. Because to be used of him for his glory and his honor and used of him how he desires to use you is true success. <clears throat> Amen. The, con the conception of the Holy Spirit as a divine influence of power that we are somehow to get a hold of and use leads us to self-exaltation, self-exaltation. And self-sufficiency. One, uh, one who so, so thinks of the Holy Spirit and who at the same time imagines that he's received the Holy Spirit will almost inevitably, inevitably be full of spiritual pride. And strut about as if he belonged to some superior order of Christians. Wow. Now come on. Charismatic Word of Faith, Pentecostals, go ahead and just go down to Raleigh and go to the museum and go to the self-kicking machine and let it kick you a few times. Amen. It is not about exalting us. It's not about us having a corner on some kind of market. It is about yielding to God, yielding to the Spirit, having Him have full control of what He desires to do in our life. See, we're always wanting the Holy Ghost to come in and give us more power to get what we want. How often are we going in there and giving everything to him so he can use us the way he wants to, even if it's not what we want? Now, is he God or not? Is he simply, you know, your, um, your can of spinach? Come on, then, y'all. Now, you all, y'all are old enough to have seen Popeye. I love it. I need my can of spinach. You know? You know, Popeye wasn't anything until he had his can of spinach. Then he turned into Popeye the Sailor Man. He was like, and he went crazy. Brutus was in trouble when Popeye got his spinach. And I think oftentimes we're looking at the Holy Spirit as a can of spinach. We might be struggling in areas. And don't, don't undo things and don't misrepresent. There's adjustments that have to be made here in order to fully understand how he works. Remember, we said in the beginning, in order to understand how he works, we've got to know him. And able to be able to cooperate with him on how he works, we've got to know him. Somebody say amen. amen. So, he's not your can of spinach. 
Because Jesus said that when the Holy Ghost comes on you, it was for a reason. So we'll be witnesses. Amen. I said amen. amen. They were to be empowered to be witnesses. In other words, we're to be so full of the Spirit and so yielded to the Spirit. I do not believe you can be full unless you're yielded. That went over big. See, so we have to be yielded to the Spirit. So if you're not yielded, you'll, you'll take what you want. We do this all the time. I'm going to tell you, I love, the, I love my heritage. I love my old, my old Pentecostal heritage. I love coming to get to the Word of Faith and the Charismatics. But I am telling you, one of the things that we, we did that was a drawback was we started picking and choosing, and we wanted to get certain things so we could enjoy life and be successful at life. And, not at the, and at the same time, not have to yield to what God said. Do you remember the Lord said to the apostle, uh, when, when he went, to, uh, appeared to Ananias, and said, go, go call for one Saul, Tarsus? No, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Remember that? And he said, I've heard of this man, how much evil he's done. He said, he's a chosen vessel. I mean, I've shown him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Now, sometimes in our circles, we just think everything's going to be hunkadory. You're not ever going to have to, you're not ever going to have to face anything. You're not going to have to face any trials or tribulations. That's not biblical. That went over big. You can't confess away all your trials. No, the Lord told you what to do. Put on the whole armor of God that you will be able to withstand in the evil day. But it didn't, what's that mean? There's an evil day coming. You can't act like you ain't come and stick your head in the sand and say, I don't believe in evil days. Tough. God does. Amen. He even sent equipment so you'd be ready when it shows up. Amen. Amen. See, we took confession to the wrong degree. We thought we could just, you can't, listen, you got some people who almost think they can confess the devil away. If, if, if anybody could have cast every demon and every uh, principality and power into the pit before their time, yeah. Jesus could have. Yeah. Yeah. And they said, have you come to cast us into the pit before the time? And guess what Jesus didn't do? Yeah. He didn't do that. He let them go into the pigs and they went off and drowned themselves. Because they, they didn't want demons in them either. Yeah. But he did not. Have you, heard, have you ever seen some of the craziest teachings? <laughs> We're binding every spirit. Not one time do we find Jesus going to, to a city and saying, or sending the disciples out, go bind the strong man of the city. And when you do, amen, amen, you'll have a revival. You know what he said? He said, good preachers, they reject to cast your feet off. She cast the dust of your feet off as, them, as a testimony against them. You don't see Jesus coming in Jerusalem going, I bind the ruling spirit over Jerusalem. I will have a miraculous entry into Jerusalem. Is that what Jesus did? Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I've wept for you. We come up with some of the craziest. Brother Hagin said, it's just crazy. Just crazy. Stuff. <coughs> and we do the same thing with the Holy Spirit. We almost treat the Holy Spirit like he's our, our, our uh, bodyguard and guard enforcer, and we just walk around and do what we want to do, and he's got to clean up our mess. You got the wrong concept. Now, if we, are, if we are believers and we are yielded to God, then we're yielded to the entire Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Praise God. If we grasp the thought that the Holy Spirit is a divine person of infinite majesty, glory, holiness, and power, who is, 
who in marvelous condescension has come into our hearts to make his abode there and take possession of our lives and make use of them, it will put us in the dust and keep us in the dust. In other words, in your perspective. We have to stop exalting ourselves above. This is, what, this, is the, this is the danger we've entered into a lot of times in the charismatic circle, word of faith, Pentecostal circles, particularly word of faith charismatic, is we begin to exalt ourselves above the throne of God. Because God's there for us to use instead of us surrender to him for him to use. Well, what about righteousness? I, I, listen, I'm not unteaching that. I'm saying we have to keep the right perspective. We have to understand he will and always will be greater than us. Amen. Amen. Even when God created Adam in his class, in his, in, his, in, in, in his image, in his likeness, God was still the God of heaven and earth. Amen. We have to be careful that we don't slip into subliminally without really understanding it to this place where we think, well, God the Father, he's God in heaven. Jesus is my redeemer. The Holy Ghost is my, is my power supply. He will endue you with power. He does that into you with power so you can just go play with it. You regulate power into its proper use. We are to be used of God for his purposes. Amen. And that comes to us, dear Holy Ghost men and women. An imperative upon us, impressing upon us that we must recognize the deity and the royalty, and the majesty of the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit. Because God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, the Trinity, all make up the Godhead, God. And they supersede any created being. Thus are to be adored and worshipped and yielded and submitted to. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. I'm going to read a little bit more. We'll, we'll quit out of Tory's book here. I can think of no more thought more humbling or more overwhelming than the thought that a person of divine majesty and glory dwells in my heart and is ready to even use me. Amen. See, we, we, we misinterpret things like the authority of the believer to mean that we're above God. You know, well, no, we're not. That authority is because Jesus purchased it for us, and we do it what? In his name. Now, y'all probably know who I'm talking about here, but there's, there's something that's always bugged me. One of the civil rights preachers goes into churches and tells people, you know, to say, I am somebody. You know, and they just could preach, I am somebody, I am somebody. Now, if you were out to the world, just a motivational speaker, it wouldn't bug me. But if you're calling yourself a preacher and you're going into the church, you're nobody without Jesus Christ. Amen. See, I expect the world to think that there's, there's something else. But in the church, I am somebody because Jesus is in me. And without him, I am nobody. <coughs> the Holy Spirit has come to indwell me, to empower me, to live out as a, an, as a representative of Jesus Christ. But without his aid, I can't do anything. Amen. I am only somebody because Jesus Christ redeemed me. And the Holy Spirit has baptized me into the body of Christ. And now taken up residence within me to empower me. To live out a godly life. Can somebody say amen? amen? Young people don't need to be told they're somebody, you're somebody, you're somebody. Get saved and Jesus makes you somebody. See, so you're short-circuiting humanity when they don't have Jesus. When they don't have the life of God in them. When they don't have the Holy Spirit indwelling them. And cooperating with the working of the Spirit and the dealings of the Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit was sent 
Remember, and I'm going to get more into my notes next week. We went really, really late uh, in other directions this morning. But remember when Jesus was about to depart, he said this, I'll send you a, I'll not leave you comfortless, comfortless. I'll send you another comforter. Now we know from our study that that word comforter in the Greek is parakletos. He's the advocate. He's the helper. He's the strengthener. He's the standby. He's the teacher. Amen. He's the intercessor and he is the comforter. Amen. That word mean, having that, all those meanings uh, to it. But Jesus said, I'm, and he says this, I'll send another. The word another in the Greek is very interesting in this particular word, that, this particular place where it's used, this word. It means another after the same manner as myself. So when the Holy Spirit came, he came to represent in, in, in spiritual matters the absent physical presence of the Lord Jesus Christ on the earth. But he was going to do the same things. Amen? I said amen. See, they had to be submitted to the will of God in order to get to the, to the present Jesus to get anything done. We're to be submitted to the Holy Spirit. The, the, and what I'm trying to get across there is we must come and recognize who the Holy Spirit is and if we recognize him who he is as who he is, then our attitude about him has to change. And it has to become that of respect and honor and a worshipful attitude towards the Holy Spirit instead of, it's my new play toy. It's my new rock'em, sock'em robots or something I got for Christmas. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. Praise the Lord. And as we do so, and as we come to a respect and honor, I'll tell you, and we're going to get into this, but you know, the Holy Spirit can be grieved. Amen. If we can grieve him, what do you think grieves him? Dishonor him, and that grieves him. Disrespect him, that grieves him. Don't show him due diligence as the third person of the Godhead will grieve him. Treat him as something other than he is will grieve him. And the more we understand that, and the more we entreat him out of honor and respect and worship and adoration, the more he'll manifest. You know, I've already probably seen the little thing we put up last, in the last week, about 2015, on, on, on Facebook. And we're going to get into this on Wednesday night. We're believing that 2015 is going to be the year of visitation, manifestation, and demonstration for our church. And that's not a word for the whole body of Christ. That's what we're believing God for. Okay? Now, Shekinah Glory is coming in April. Two nights, Wednesday and Thursday night. They're staying over the third night for our um, RMAI meeting. Okay? And... Uh, all church workers who want to be here and help work during the meeting, <laughs> I guess you'll probably find out. You'll be, figure out a way to get here after, you know, whatever. Hallelujah. But um, we're believing God. Now, well, that's why we're teaching on who the Holy Spirit is. We don't want to get just looking for the work of the Spirit without first entreating the person of the Spirit. Because then we're just using him for our own benefits. So we're going to spend the next month, probably, talking about ministering on. And we're not, we're not getting any further this morning. Hallelujah. If we will begin to see the Holy Spirit as God. There's, and then think about it. Are there things you do in your relation to the Holy Spirit that you would never think about doing in your relation to the Lord Jesus Christ? Or think of the Holy Spirit in a way you would never think of the Lord Jesus Christ or the Father? If so, then we, adjustments have to be made. Amen? 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 All right, praise the Lord. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, 
P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.